currently working in the Department of Botany, Mizoram University as Associate Professor and Head of the Department. For a brief introduction about our speaker, let me read out his profile. Dr. Fogzola has a master's degree from Nehu in the year 1998 and has been awarded to PhD degree in the year 2004 from Nehu. He has 16 years teaching experience and 21 years research experiences. His research interests include soil microbiology, environmental pollution micro microbiology, and biofertilizer technology. He already has published 23 research papers and four book chapters. He has also completed three research projects and, and has another three ongoing projects. Under his guidance and supervision, five scholars have received PhD degree and currently he has six PhD scholars. Now let me welcome Dr. Lalfakzola to present a paper. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, so much. Uh, so once again, uh, <clears throat> I congratulate Tsampai uh, uh, College uh, for organizing a wonderful webinar, uh, which is at the international level. So I'm very, very uh, grateful for inviting me to have a talk on this uh, special occasion. <clears throat> Yes, sir. No, sir. We can. You can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So the <clears throat> topic that I have chosen for this uh, for today's webinar is uh, impact of heavy metals on soil microbial uh, phosphatase and biomass. So <clears throat> heavy metal pollution is a uh, a uh, serious uh, global environmental problem, as we know, and it adversely affects uh, plant and genetic variation. And it also alters the composition and activity of soil microbial communities. And this heavy metals pollution can result in adverse effect on plant growth, uh, soil microbial diversity and activity, and apparently has a stronger impact on their genetic structure. So <clears throat> the microbial diversity also decreases uh, with increasing this uh, concentration of heavy metals. So as we have seen here, these are the uh, few sources of that uh, heavy metals uh, pollution uh, from, uh, from uh, different sources. And <clears throat> so these are the, yeah, it will be more clear here. So the sources, the sources of heavy metal, uh, it, may be, it may include uh, metal and metal plating and finishing operation, manure, biosolid, uh, sewage starts, industrial wastewater, metal mining and smelting, fossil fuel combustion, pesticide, fertilizer, herbicide. So even this uh, motor engine has also uh, contributed uh, this heavy metal pollution to the soil. So some resource has going or some resource has going on about this uh, road traffic uh, pollution. So it was observed that mm, the road traffic, the nearby the road, uh, soil has been uh, polluted by these heavy metals. So <clears throat> these are the worldwide uh, mm, data uh, regarding the uh, pollutant, on, uh, soil pollutant. So, uh, still this uh, compost table uh, may compress around 81.6 as we have seen here. So here I want to stress on this metal. This metal it may comprise, it may occupy only 0.09%. But though it looks very small in compared to um, other West, it has a very, very uh, negative impact on the ecosystem. That's why uh, we have to concern about uh, this heavy metal uh, uh, pollution, especially on the uh, microbial processes. So why, why we are very much concerned about on this uh, heavy metal pollution, pollu 
also on the uh, microorganism. So, as we know that uh, these uh, microorganisms are essential in the composition of soil organic matter, and any decrease in the microbial diversity or appearance may adversely affect nutrient absorption uh, from uh, the soil for plant. And <clears throat> the elevated level of uh, heavy metals in soils has significant impact on the uh, microbial population size and overall the activity of the soil microbial communities. As we know that uh, these soil microorganisms are the fundamental uh, organism uh, which decompose and which transform or which recycle all the nutrients which are present on the earth. So if we, uh, if we um, alter uh, their overall activities, so it will may affect the ecosystem as a whole. So as we have seen here, uh, so we have uh, different uh, types of the heavy metals here. For example, lead, cadmium, uh, mercury, and nickel. Okay, so it may inhibit the cell division. And uh, another problem that we have here is the inhibition, inhibition of enzyme activity and uh, translation inhibition, DNA damage, transcription inhibition, cell membrane damage, protein denaturation, and so on. So, so out of these uh, different heavy metal today, I'm going to uh, stress zinc and copper. So how it affect on the uh, microbes. So if there are so many parameters, but I may not be able to uh, con uh, include all the parameters. I'm going to in, uh, stress on uh, there uh, one of the important enzyme, which is known as the acid phosphatase and their uh, growth pattern. So. Uh, based on that parameter, I'm planning to um, present uh, today how this uh, zinc and copper affect on the microorganism. So, uh, so as we have seen here, these heavy metals um, contamination, uh, it will decrease the enzyme activity. So here, uh, there are different type of that uh, soil enzyme, but of that soil enzyme, as I say, I'm going to uh, stress only one important particular time, which is phosphatase. With uh, this phosphatase, later on I will discuss uh, in detail. So uh, this heavy metal, uh, it will increase the enzyme activity. So there are three categories: so high, medium, and low. So uh, this uh, heavy metal, uh, it may decrease the activity. The highest group are the hydrogenase and aryl sulfatase. And maybe then the mid group are the beta glucosidase, ureas, and the lower group are uh, phosphatase and catalase. So today we are going to discuss about this phosphatase. And these are the scenario of the uh, Indian uh, uh, data, uh, the he heavy metal uh, uh, affected uh, on the soil, on the soil uh, from different state of Mm. Just want to highlight uh, about the Indian data. Okay, so <clears throat> as I have said, that soil microorganisms are essential in the decomposition of soil organic matter. If uh, all the decomposed, all the dead organic matter are decomposed and recycled back, are uh, done by this microorganism. And any decrease in the microbial diversity or abundance may adverse affect the nutrient absorption from the from the soil for the plant so <clears throat> how this uh, heavy metal effect on the microorganism i follow this on but uh, so uh, uh, it may it may uh, slow down the their growth so it may disturb their morphology metabolism population size and overall activity of the soil microbial community so, <clears throat> what are soil enzymes? Uh, so, soil enzymes are nothing. Uh, uh, they are a natural catalyst which are produced by uh, those microorganisms. So, microorganisms here, we mainly concern about this uh, bacteria and fungi. So, uh, so these soil enzymes uh, are associated with microorganisms 
and they also involve in uh, the composition of all living matter and participate in the processes of releasing and producing uh, plant nutrients, circulation of carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and other nutrients. Okay, so therefore measuring enzyme activity is very, very important to see the uh, actual or the exact condition of the soil fertility. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> so here, uh, they, are, they are very involved. Uh, uh, here I want to, uh, here I highlighted uh, some uh, selected uh, element, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, even other uh, element also, they are also involved. Here today, I'm, we are interested on this phosphorus. Okay, so uh, this conversion or the fixation of this phosphorus is done by uh, this microorganism, bacteria or fungi, through their enzymatic activity. So if some heavy metal is occur, so it will disturb this enzyme activity. So if enzyme activity is disturbed, means the recycle, the cycle of this phosphorus in the nature, it will automatic, it will be automatically disturbed. So here uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, soy enzymes. So, for example, this uh, dehydrogenase. Mm, so, this hydrogenase. Uh, so, out of uh, several uh, soil enzymes, this dehydrogenase comprises around uh, twenty percent. So, this um, dehydrogenase enzyme, uh, the reaction is enzyme reaction is is for this electron transport system, and uh, this activity it will indicate the microbial activity as the whole. Okay, so means that the hydrogenase activity is high. So the activity of the soil microorganism are very, very high. And for example, this. So this uh, beta glucosidase, the enzyme reaction is the cellobios uh, hydrolysis, and it will indicate carbon cycle. So means that if the glucosidase is very active, means that the carbon cycle in the nature is very high. Something like that. And uh, cellulose, or oh, sorry, uh, cellulase, mm. and uh, cellulase we have, and uh, uh, phenol oxidase, urea, amidase, and phosphatase. This one, this phosphatase uh, comprise around uh, sixteen percent. So this phosphatase, it release the, it, it, the enzyme reaction, uh, uh, indicate the uh, uh, release of uh, the phosphate. And the indicator of this measurement of this enzyme is to check the T cycle, the phosphorus cycle in the nature, and so on and so on. Okay, so I will not uh, go each and every enzyme. So, uh, <clears throat> so therefore, uh, measuring enzyme enzymatic activity provide an early indicator of changes in the intensity of biological process and the level of soil degradation. So in this regard, uh, soil enzyme activity are often used to evaluate the impact of human activity on soil life. So it can be used Hello. as a say of microbial community enzyme activity. Mm -hmm. So have been used to assay impact of environmental stress on soil microbial activity okay so these are some uh, uh, points uh, why we used to uh, concern uh, why we concern on this soil enzyme so now, uh, now let me uh, go to the uh, let me select that uh, particular that element uh, that phosphorus because uh, uh, today our topic is that uh, uh, measurement of the phosphatase. This phosphatase, uh, it will uh, it catalyze the uh, reaction, I mean the transformation of this phosphorus uh, in soluble or unavailable form to available form of the planet. So, uh, so we know that this uh, phosphorus is the second, the second most critical macronutrient. The first one is uh, nitrogen. Mm. And the uh, phosphorus is going to be plant nutrient that will limit agricultural production in the 
uh, next millennium. So that's why, uh, uh, that's why study on results based on this uh, phosphorus recycle or uh, uh, how this health mental effect on this uh, phosphorus cycle is uh, very, very much important uh, uh, in view of that agricultural production. So uh, now let me uh, uh, give you some idea about why this phosphorus is very, very important uh, for the plant. So uh, the first one, it, it stimulates root development and growth. And second is give plant rapid and vigorous start. And the uh, third one is it give essential for many metabolic uh, plant processes and also uh, give a seed formation and organization of cell. And the uh, last one encourage early early maturity. Okay, so these are the uh, some few uh, important selected uh, role of uh, phosphorus on plant. <clears throat> so in nature, so uh, so let me go back here. Uh, here we say that phosphorus is the second most critical micronutrient, and the first one is nitrogen, uh, as we know. So, so the uh, phosphorus, the organic, uh, we have the two group of the phosphorus which are present in the in this uh, on this planet. On this planet, we have two form. One is uh, organic form, and another one is inorganic form. So this organic form. This organic form, uh, which is around 50% of the total, uh, the total phosphorus. So this organic form, we have three group, inositol, phosphate, uh, phospholipid, and nucleic acid. So I'm not uh, going in detail about this thing. And another group of that phosphorus is inorganic phosphorus. Okay. So uh, here, uh, again, there are two types. Uh, which one is the strenzite? Uh, this is uh, in the form of uh, strike which is the iron phosphate and varicide, uh, this is aluminum, aluminum phosphate. Okay, uh, uh, so here, this organic phosphorus and inorganic phosphorus, as we have seen here, mm, especially this uh, inorganic phosphorus. So as such, the strength or the varicide in this form, the plant cannot be able to use directly until and unless it is modified. So. Uh, so some uh, <clears throat> some uh, action has to be taken to modif modification of this um, unavoidable form of phosphorus. So some uh, microorganism uh, like some bacteria and some fungi, uh, they have ability to uh, transform those uh, unavoidable form to available form for the plant. Okay. So in such cases, in such transformation mechanism. Uh, some uh, organic acid as well as some uh, protein, uh, uh, for example, particular acid phosphatase enzyme. Okay, so they used to work on that uh, mechanism. Okay, so uh, today also I'm going to present uh, one particular protein, which is known as the acid phosphatase. This acid phosphatase, it will uh, it will provide uh, it will provide the transformation of uh, those organic phosphorus. Okay. Uh, the organic phosphorus into inorganic form, uh, which is available for the plant. So, uh, so by measuring the activity of those uh, enzymes, we can assess, uh, we can predict the, um, the what to say, uh, how is the fertility of that particular area, that particular soil. So, it is very, very important uh, to uh, measure such a, uh, such a particular enzyme. <clears throat> So just now here, as I said, we have uh, we have uh, two uh, two group of uh, phosphorus. Okay, so these are organic and these are the orthophosphate or the inorganic form here. So you have the organic uh, <coughs> organic uh, P. Uh, it may be uh, from the plant residue, the microbial cell, the soil organic matter, and soluble organic P. And here another we have uh, orthophosphate group. Here we have uh, calcium phosphate, aluminum phosphate, and iron phosphate. Okay, so uh, this, so this calcium phosphate, aluminum phosphate, and iron phosphate here. So <clears throat> since calcium or aluminum or this iron, it trapped this phosph this phosphate. Okay, this PO4. Actually, this uh, this PO4 ion form it is it should be available for the plant, but 
it is trapped by this calcium, aluminium, and iron. Okay, so we have to break. We have to break down. Uh, we have to remove this calcium, aluminium, and iron. Okay, so such kind of removal of unwanted, I should say, unwanted uh, metal uh, to release this PO4 is known as a phosphate solubilization. Okay, so such release or such um, such modification is carried out by some bacteria and some fungi. <clears throat> so, uh, despite uh, the abundance of phosphorus in both organic and inorganic form in the soil, it is mostly unavoidable for them. Okay, so I say that we have a huge plenty of phosphorus in our soil. Okay, but those phosphorus cannot be utilized by the plant unless and until it is modified by some microorganism. And the use of agrochemicals to satisfy the demand for the phosphorus to improve crop yield has led to the deterioration of the ecosystem and soil health, as well as imbalancing the soil microbiota. Okay, so uh, you may uh, say that uh, the phosphate uh, fertilizer, chemical fertilizer, we, we can use, of course, we can use, but as we have seen here, in some way, it may deteriorate uh, the ecosystem, okay? Uh, for the long term, it may not be safe for us. So that's why nowadays uh, people uh, people are trying to use this um, bi-fertilizer, so to replace this uh, uh, chemical fertilizer. Hmm. And internet problem, so, but now it's okay, fine. So let me continue. Hmm. So I, Thing uh, we have come across this slide. So anyway, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, um, that chemical fertilizer, that uh, phosphate fertilizer. So uh, if we keep using, if we keep going using this type of chemical fertilizer, so uh, uh, after some uh, after some few years, it will deteriorate our ecosystem, our soil ecosystem. Okay, so uh, it will it may imbalance um, the soil microbiota. Now. Okay, so so nowadays uh, people are trying to use uh, another uh, by another type of um, fertilizer, which is known as a uh, bi fertilizer, which is uh, cost of, which is cost effective and eco friendly. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> as I said that uh, in in my lab also uh, we are working on this uh, bi fertilizer. Uh, particularly this uh, phosphate by fertilizer. So uh, we are working on uh, since uh, from uh, eight, uh, ten, eight years back. So now we are having a huge collection of this uh, bio uh, biophosphate uh, fertilizer. So <clears throat> we are extracted. I uh, mean, so uh, we are isolated from the uh, paddy field, uh, agriculture field, and we isolate and we do uh, that. Uh, DNA isolation and we send to outside for this uh, identification. So now uh, we have a huge collection of this uh, biofertilizer in the Department of Botany. Okay, so these are the uh, role of those uh, phosphorus. How important uh, for the plant, but I'm not uh, going to repeat as we have seen here. So uh, it, it will um, <clears throat> It will have a, a, a benefit on a plant in different way. And <clears throat> here, the, here the slide the source as the mechanism on the transformation of the uh, unavailable form of the soil phosphorus into available form. All this transformation is um, taken up by uh, the soil microorganism. So those microorganisms, those group of microorganisms which convert uh, uh, unavailable form of soil phosphorus to available phosphorus are known as a phosphate solubilizer. Okay, so this phosphate solubilizer, uh, we have uh, two groups. Uh, one is the bacterial group, and another one is the uh, fungal group. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> in one lab, uh, we are conducting a small experiment regarding how these uh, uh, heavy metals affect on those microbial process, microbial activity, in terms of their biomass, as well as in terms of their uh, phosphatase activities. So as I say that uh, we have a uh, uh, two group of this p solubilizing, uh, uh, p -solubilizing uh, microorganism, so bacterial group and 
fungal growth. So here another trunk we have that uh, mob mobilizing. So we are not talk we are not going to talk about this mobilization uh, here today. Uh, but uh, uh, this immobilization, as we know that um, this arbuscular mycorrhiza, uh, they have ability to uh, to collect, uh, to collect those uh, fixed P from the cities, their surrounding root environment. Mm. So uh, this uh, this mycorrhiza, they used to absorb those uh, fixed uh, P uh, uh, to the plant. Okay, uh, so such kind of organism are known as the P mobilizing. By factor, but we are not going to talk about. So here today we are going to talk about this. So this also I will skip. So I am not going uh, in detail. I've already explained about this thing. So as I said, the small experiment uh, was conducted here. How this uh, copper and zinc um, uh, effect on the phosphatase enzyme activity and biomass of this Aspergillus niger and Pseudomonas fluorescent. This Aspergillus niger is a fungi, uh, fungus, and this uh, Pseudomonas fluorescent is a bacteria. <clears throat> so uh, we have, we have, as I said, we, we selected uh, two heavy metals, uh, copper and zinc. So we have uh, this kind of concentration under this uh, copper uh, copper treatment. Uh, we set up uh, this experiment control. Uh, 0.5 uh, millimolar, 2.5 millimolar, uh, 4.5 millimolar, 6.5, 8.5, 10.5 millimolar. And zinc, uh, we have uh, control again. We have 0.5 millimolar, 1 millimolar, and uh, 3, uh, 3 millimolar. Okay, so these are the uh, different concentrations that we are using uh, to treat on those selected microorganisms. So the parameter we are here is the phosphatase uh, enzyme. Or the phosphatase protein uh, and the biomass of those uh, selected organisms. So we have selected Aspergillus. Mm, so these are the culture uh, uh, culture of uh, that the Aspergillus. And if you uh, see under microscope, you have to see the uh, structure of this uh, Aspergillus. And these are the uh, Pseudomonas fluorescent. Okay, so these are on the plate, and these are under the uh, microscope <clears throat> and <clears throat> how we did uh, this uh, uh, how we uh, collect uh, how we isolate and culture the first of all is to collect the soil sample from the pedophile and we have to follow the uh, serial dilution technique so and after the serial dilution technique we have to uh, the, the, the soil uh, the soil solution was cut on those rose bengal, rose bengal gramidia. And after, after rose bengal media, uh, uh, culturing the, uh, those uh, different uh, colony of uh, fungi. So we examine under microscope. And after seeing that, uh, uh, that our uh, selected uh, microorganism, we do a peer culture here. Okay. So uh, in this peer culture, in this peer culture, uh, we used to apply uh, this, uh, Picos media. So this Picos media, it will give us uh, which one is uh, 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 which one is involved in that uh, uh, phosphorus solubilization. As we have seen here, we have clear zone here. Okay, so this clear zone indicate that this microorganism are involved in the uh, 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 phosphorus and another one is uh, uh, the bacteria pseudomonas. Uh, same thing, uh, fungi. We used to get the cells from the pedophile, and we have to do serial dilution. And after serial dilution, we used to culture uh, that uh, soil, uh, that soil solution in that uh, nutrient drop. Okay, so now we have a, a mix of uh, different. Uh, uh, Stains of bacteria, and after that, uh, after this uh, stain of bacteria, so I'm not uh, actually I'm not giving the picture here. So just like that uh, uh, fungi, uh, so we used to do uh, the, uh, uh, a screening, a screening of the phosphate solubilizer. So uh, each and every colony, uh, those who have uh, those who give us those uh, uh, 
uh, tears on again we used to uh, uh, culture uh, we used to uh, we used to do the peer culture as we have seen here okay so based on that uh, based on uh, such kind of uh, uh, culture and uh, screening and that uh, uh, peer culture uh, finally uh, we used to uh, we have uh, uh, to the uh, true uh, selected uh, test organism uh, pseudomonas and uh, pseudomonas and bacterial pseudomonas and aspergillus okay yeah 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 I, okay. these are clear zone clear zone uh, these are the pseudomonas and these are the clear zone because of uh, the formation of this clear zone uh, we confirm that uh, that this organism is involved in the civilization of those uh, phosphorus Okay, so here, uh, uh, let me, uh, I just want to give you some uh, result uh, under the biomass. So here biomass, what, what we mean here is that um, uh, instead of here, uh, for example, here, uh, this is the plate culture, this is a solid media. But in the case of to, to measure this biomass used to culture in the uh, nutrient media, by, uh, by eliminating the agar. So we have a nutrient, uh, sorry, we have a broad a liquid culture. So, uh, so we, have, we have a different set of um, uh, test tube. So by giving uh, different uh, concentration of this zinc chloride as well as the uh, uh, copper, okay. So uh, we are giving a uh, different concentration. Then in the different concentration, we put aspergillus as well as this uh, um, Aspergillus in uh, zinc and that uh, copper. Okay, so as we have seen here, after um, this aspergillus, uh, this uh, fungus, we used to uh, we used to incubate around uh, six to seven days. So after seven days, we observe that. So after we uh, we measure the biomass, the total, uh, the total. Uh, what to say that uh, the Total uh, the total biomass of uh, the aspergillus um, we used to measure. So the result we have here is okay. Uh, uh, with increasing of uh, with increasing the concentration of zinc and with this increasing of concentration of copper. Okay, so the biomass also increased. Okay, so this is the control, and even this was the control. If you compare control with other uh, uh, treatment, okay, so there is a significant, there is a significant variation uh, uh, between this control and other treatment, as well as in copper So this experiment, uh, if you see, uh, if you compare, this is the, uh, the control plate. This is uh, in the solid, uh, in the solid culture. So if you compare here the, um, the other treated uh, treatment, so by measuring the size of this colony, okay. So it was observed that uh, it was observed that uh, this uh, heavy metal treatment has a uh, negative effect on the growth or the size of the this is a type of in So here uh, we used to measure the enzyme which is being released by Aspergillus in the media. Okay, so we used to collect uh, measure uh, enzyme activity. Okay. Uh, using this spectrophotometer. Uh, okay, so uh, here, if you compare uh, this, uh, this uh, treatment, okay, so there is a, a highly significant variation uh, between this control and, and other treatment. Even here, also in copper sulfate, in copper treatment, also, uh, okay, the higher, the higher the concentration of the heavy metal, okay. So the lower or the decrease in, in the phosphate um, activity. Okay, so here we put uh, some statistical analysis, but you may not need to uh, uh, need to explain uh, one by one. But
بس يا I just want to emphasize here the overall the overall sense of variation. Okay, so we have tested this control uh, with uh, those treatment 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, 4.5, and so on, so on. Okay, so we have a 100% okay significant variation. This is very very high uh, significant variation among this uh, variation. Okay, I mean the treat control as well as the treatment. Okay. <clears throat> And this is also uh, so that the uh, uh, ANOVA, mm, ANOVA uh, on um, colony size. Okay, so here also I'm not going to I will go only highlight this on the the first one. Okay, this is the overall variation. So control into 0.5 into into one and three. So here also it is almost hundred percent. Okay, it is ninety nine. 0.9999 something like that. Okay, so it is a high significant variation we have, and uh, even in this uh, the mycelium dry weight or the biomass also we have here we have a, a, a 0 0.03. Okay, it is a uh, so we cannot say a high significant, but of course it uh, we have a significant variation here, and this is uh, enzyme activity. So, uh, as per the last the phosphor test, we have a very, very uh, significant variation among uh, those uh, treat, treat, among those treatment and the control. And this is the phosphor test activity again um, under the, the uh, per treatment. Here also we have a uh, 0 .00, almost 100, a high significant variation. We should say we have a high significant variation among the treatment. Okay, now here the pseudomonas, the bacteria, uh, uh, just like that uh, fungal uh, experiment, even this in the, in the pseudomonas of bacteria, the zinc chloride or the zinc or the heavy metal zinc has a negative impact or negative effect on the biomass of pseudomonas. Okay, so if, if we increase the uh, concentration, okay, so there will be decrease in the Cell biomass. Okay. In uh, this control without, without any heavy metal, is it? So then, okay. So means that, okay. So means that uh, within 24 hours, within 24 hours, okay. So the reproduction, the multiplication of those bacterial cell is must must reduce due to the um, due to the presence of the heavy metals. Okay. So this is the, uh, the zinc chloride. It's also in the copper. Okay, so the same result was observed uh, in the copper also. And this is the <coughs> this is the um, uh, cells uh, uh, the, uh, the the growth. Okay, uh, the area the, uh, the size of the colony that we have measured. So uh, this this control and these are the treatments. So with increasing the concentration. With increasing the concentration of metal, it will decrease the size of the colony here. Okay, so if you compare here, uh, with control with the treatment, so uh, it is decreasing. So it's the enzyme activity. So enzyme activity also we have uh, in uh, first, uh, in this uh, pseudomonas in bacteria. With increasing, with increasing the concentration of the heavy metal, so there is also a decrease in the, uh, in the activity of enzyme okay both in and copper okay so this is the statistical analysis the statistical analysis now in the overall here also we have a high risk okay which is 100 uh, percent this uh, zinc treatment uh, those uh, pseudomonas Biomass and these are uh, copper sulfate treatment. Copper uh, again, the biomass here very, very significant, okay, high significant variation here. And in that, okay, uh, the incentive uh, a significant uh, variation here among the treatments, okay. So so, uh, so from the work, uh, 
so we can conclude us we can conclude that uh, this uh, two half metals the selected two half metals zinc and copper sulfate uh, they have a they give a negative effect on the bios of the test of us and uh, So the phosphatase, the phosphatase. We saw the phosphatase decrease significantly with concentration. It is significant for the inhibition effect of various microbial population. Okay, so uh, you know, my presentation uh, for today. Thank you very much, Sarah, for your interesting and very informative presentation. Now, moving on to the discussion part, all the participants are welcome to drop your queries. If you have any doubts or questions, you are most welcome to drop in the comment section, and our speaker will answer your queries. Some questions from the audience. I will read it out. What is the most dangerous heavy metals for plants? What is the most dangerous heavy metals for plants? Okay, so in terms of the most dangerous, uh, actually I have no idea. Uh, but uh, but for example um, for example um, this uh, what to say this even this copper mm, okay so one thing is that uh, these uh, metals that we are talking about whether it is a copper or iron or uh, potassium or whatever um, they are they are Consider as a ma macronutrients. Okay, so the plant need uh, those uh, element, but all those uh, all those macronutrients which are essential for plant, if they are in excess, okay, if they are in excess, uh, they are very dangerous for any organism, even plant or animal or microorganism. Okay, so uh, for the dangerous one, uh, I mean not. Uh, I have no idea which one is the dangerous one, but one that, as I said, all are macronutrients, they are required by the plant, but when they are in excess, when they are in a high concentration, okay, so they are dangerous. Okay, thank you, sir. And here is another question. How can we control heavy metals from soil? How can we control heavy metals from soil? Mm, so, yeah, uh, <clears throat> what to say, uh, there may not be exactly, uh, to con uh, there may not be exactly uh, what to say, uh, like, uh, like, uh, one of the most uh, important and popular um, uh, pollutant, heavy metal pollutant, is uh, industrial effluent. Okay, sea or factory. If they are directly their effluent, their sea waste, if they are directly uh, goes to uh, uh, in the in the soil or in the agriculture. Okay, so that directly it will it will pollute. Directly it will pollute the. A soil, of course. Okay, but uh, nowadays, uh, in, if you look at this uh, Mizoram scenario, so we don't have uh, such kind of a big industry or uh, factory like that. Okay, so um, from uh, from since uh, we don't have right now, so what we can do, we can have a same a pre plan. Okay, so if if we want to establish a big or a factory, whatever. Okay, so. Uh, we have to have to some control measure, okay? Uh, so actually, as I said, we don't have such uh, industry or uh, factory, okay? So in other state or in other country, other country, uh, there the heavy metal pollute, uh, heavy metal pollute is this industry and 
uh, uh, what to say, industry and the factory. And another one is that uh, the fertilizer, okay. Well, so uh, that, uh, to use, uh, to minimize the use of those as well as the industry, sorry, agriculture, Uh, which is collective uh, uh, yeah, like insecticide, mm, herbicide, and so on. All these uh, chemical compounds uh, have, uh, at least they have uh, in the, they have those heavy metal. Okay, so we have to minimize the use of those xenobiotic. Okay, and another one is that uh, there are some remedies, there are some strategies, uh, which are uh, how to remove uh, those uh, present uh, heavy metal in the particular oil in the particular area of the soil system. Okay, so those are known as bioremediation. Okay, so by using the microorganism, by using uh, this, okay, we can remove, eliminate, we can reduce the concentration or the amount of the uh, heavy metal which are present in the particular area. Okay, one question is posted in the chat box, so I will read it out again. If a microorganism can consume the copper, what will be the significance and what can be the, the effect in general term? Can you repeat the question? Okay, sir. If a microorganism can consume the copper what will be the significant and what can be the effect in general term okay uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, not only even uh, even human plant uh, okay and microorganism okay just now i talk about that one okay in some in some level okay in some concentration we need iron we need copper okay uh, but, uh, uh, whatever uh, those uh, el elements, uh, it is uh, we require, okay, uh, by the cell, even as I say, uh, animal or plant or even microorganism. Okay, so uh, if you remove copper at all, okay, so it will hamper the, it will hamper, it will affect the, uh, okay, even the uh, microbes also, it will not. Uh, it will not uh, live longer, okay? Uh, so at level of some concentration, it is there. But as I say, if it is excess, if it excess, it will deteriorate the cell. Uh, it will uh, it will affect the uh, some metabolic pathway, okay? Okay. So or it, it it may, as I said in the first in the first slide, okay. As I said the first slide, uh, it may affect the uh, cell metabolism, okay? But I don't know which part. It is going to affect. I cannot uh, answer right now. Okay, which which pathway it will be involved? Okay. So, but anyway, my answer is that um, if they are if they, if you remove if they eliminate at all, it will affect the cell. And if you uh, if if they are present in excess, then also it will affect the cell. Okay. Thank you very much for your response and your uh, extra lecture. I don't think any more questions are coming up or any other queries. So thank you very much once again, sir. I believe that all the viewers will make you good use of your presentation today. Thank you. Thank you so much.